I believe we're live. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Should be good. Okay. My preview is just catching up then. Okay. So, hey everyone. Um, welcome to Behind the Stream Scenes. I'm Rainy. Wes is out, unfortunately sick today. He is in chat though. So hang out with him in there and we'll be part of a conversation. Um, with me today, we have two good friends of the stream, as told by Dylan and Carly Cartoons. Uh, we'll be talking about how to integrate your mod skills into a career, as well as how your career impacts your modding. So how they kind of overlap. And then get into some more technical things as far as um, how to actually apply your moderating experience onto a resume when you're looking for jobs and how to talk about it with uh, future employers. Um, so we'll go ahead and introduce our guest. Carly, why don't you go first? Hi y'all, my name is Carly. I'm a moderator for Loco. I'm an animator in Los Angeles, worked on a couple of shows. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on, Rainy. Yeah. Oh. Dylan, tell us about you. Yes, I'm as told by Dylan. I am a uh, moderator for both Loco and for Streamer Square. And I also stream uh, here on Twitch, Monday through Fridays in the morning. His streams are awesome. <laughs> fun. Um, so where do you guys stream? Um, also mod, because like you guys are both together, your teammates. I think everyone knows, might know that Watch streamer them. that you that you guys uh, work for. It looks like they're just seeing the title card. Hmm. Can they hear us? Salty, Salty, can you hear us? Things been moved over. Okay, we'll see real quick if there's. Okay, you can hear us. You just can't see us. Uh -oh. So that's at least good. You can hear us. Yeah, that's pretty good. It became a radio show so fast. Hey! <laughs> oh, there we are. There we are. Nice. Oh my gosh, cute. <laughs> Well, it's it's up now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is it, is it, I think it shows me as a dark lead Rini. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh. Y'all switch places. That's fine. All that matters <laughs> is that my name is correct. <laughs> uh, so we're we're here. Um, I'm actually a dark lead Rini. Sometimes, occasionally, I guess I'm Dylan. Um, <laughs> it happens. Um. But welcome in. Uh, we are testing out some new production stuff on um, the back end. And so we are very happy to be able to help that. Um, if you ever hear us kind of pause and like tilt our heads like we're little like dogs when they're confused, it's because we have our producer in our ears. Um, so he's letting us know what's going on. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about applying mod skills into a career. Um, I know in the pre-show, Dylan and I talked a little bit about like it was kind of interesting um, realizing later on that like our career personalities really tied into our moderator personalities yeah. and roles. Um, I apparently am a project manager type person, which explains why I make spreadsheets like crazy for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you do a great job with the with the streamer square stuff. Yeah. Rainy. You really do. Oh, for sure. So, I'm curious how if you guys have seen that kind of interaction with your career and modding. Carly, do you see overlap with animation and modding at all? I'm trying to think because, like, in a way, yes. Like, first of all, I wouldn't be able to actually mod for the show if I wasn't allowed to watch Twitch while at work. Um, so that's been really nice to just, like, have been able to mod for so many years at a place where, like, they just don't care if I'm watching Twitch as long as I get my work done. Um, but I, I do think that, like, being able to... Um, take responsibility for your actions and be able to delegate tasks and be able to manage people is is definitely very animation related um i mean it just gives you like moderating in general gives you really good leadership skills but because streaming is in the entertainment industry it is also very similar to just like working on a production except i don't draw i just get to troll loco and chat and then ban <laughs> people who are mean <laughs> right uh, yeah, and when I was at my IRL job, um, one of the things we talked about before the show, Rini, is like, you know, working on a team, right? Um, a lot of people, like entering the workforce for the first time, 
have never really experienced what it's like to be a part of a team, like a part of a team that has like one mission and one goal, right? And so mm-hmm. what, with being a mod, that is absolutely the case, right? Like we, uh, we're all very different. We come from different backgrounds, and uh, but we have to work together, um, which with you know uh, under the direction of a streamer who's like your boss, right? So even though you know it's an unpaid thing, it very much simulates what is like a common work environment, uh, which is that like you're a staff, right? You're a staff, mm-hmm. you're a team, you're a crew working for someone or working under someone at their direction, and that person will delegate tasks to you. So a lot of the basic things that you'll see at any company from a small mom and pop shop to a fortune 50 company, um, a lot of those traits, you'll see them in being a mod, especially mod for a partnered streamer that has a lot going on in their stream and their channel. Yeah, yeah especially with someone who runs a really tight, sh- tight ship like Loco. I mean, I would say that we are very coordinated and organized, um, but it does feel more than just like a... Uh, volunteer position it is like there there is like it's it's different socially which I think is really interesting but something that I've really noticed uh, lately when it comes to Loco and um, just like upping her production value and doing the lowdown and stuff is that it very much is like an animation production where things are just going to happen last minute and you just have to deal with it and you just have to adapt. And so like whenever I'm at work and someone's like, yo, we need to, we need you to work overtime. We're really sorry about this. You know, I mean, obviously you get paid for overtime. I'm like, nah, man, just don't worry about it. Like it's all chill. I can do this thing last minute. It's fine. Right. Yeah. And, just, and just the idea of having meetings, right? Like we are, oh, yeah. we, we have meetings, right? Like it's, it's, again, it's a very common thing in the workplace when there's, you know, new developments, right? You kind of have to, get on the same page so that's why you have a meeting whether it's like a regular job meeting or a mod meeting which is what we have is that allows you to as a team okay here's what's happening and it's at, again at under the direction of the boss of the streamer who's sort of setting this tone and saying hey this is what's going on i need you guys to do this that and the other yeah and a lot of times it's sometimes or i don't want to say a lot of times but there are definitely times when modding feels a lot like cr- uh crisis management and so <laughs> And I don't want to say that's like a bad thing, but like yeah. you have to be able to think quickly on your toes, especially like if you're on front page and you don't know if something is like borderline, oh, a microaggression yeah. or knowing well, like what someone's intention is, like being able to address that quickly and not have it deter um, the whole chat, not make yeah. it something that the streamer has to stop everything for, like. You never know sometimes when the streamers are going to stop and notice one comment and it sets off the whole stream. But like, it's your job as a mod to kind of catch that and filter things for them, Um, at least in most streams that I've been in. Especially with uh, sometimes trolls will make a bunch of bots to spam like gross things in chat. Like that's just a kind of, all right, all hands on deck. This is an emergency. We're facing this right now. And then we're going to chill afterwards. Yeah. Which is also why those mod discords are great because then you get to ping everyone and just be like, hey, like we need you now. If you were lurking, you can't lurk anymore. No, right. Chef, time to stop napping. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, those those conversations, like I said, you you have to have a mod discord because it gives mm-hmm. you the place and the space to be able to handle those things on the fly, right? Because you're all communicating saying, Hey, you guys are seeing this wild thing that's happening right now, right? Yeah, let's do, let's deal with this wild thing that's happening right now. Yeah. And that's one of those things too of like um, one of the things that we're creating in Streamer Square is a network of mods. Um, that way, you don't have to be on the same mod team as far as per streamer. We're a giant global mod team. That way, if there's things that happen, um, like yesterday, we had a lot of issues with hate raids, which are a oh thing. Oh, boy. Um, hate raids kind of come and go in waves with it being Pride Month and a lot of uh, Black Lives Matter fundraising happening. They're a little bit more vocal. Um, they're going into um, different streams and targeting. It's not like a full raid, whereas it's like an actual raid command. You can turn off your raids and be safe. Yeah. This is someone posting it to a website, people then clicking on the link and all going in mass um, to that stream to just spew all sorts of grossness and wow. all you can do really as a mod and a streamer is just get your hand on there quickly put it into slow mode uh email only sub only um it's it's a hard thing to have to deal with and it's it's one of those like 
you kind of have to um, put everything else aside, your personal feelings and everything, and just yeah. go into focus mode. Yeah, and like you said, crisis management, right? That's that's mm-hmm. the key phrase, right? Because when those things happen, that's why communication as a mod team or being a mod is so important. Because when things like that happen, you guys have to be as as a squad. You have to be able to like call that out immediately because you can't do it in chat, right? Or you can, but like you need to be able to say, okay, okay, who's doing this? Who's banning that? Who's who's doing this with the bot, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's so important. Communication is so important. And like I said, you, you see that in the workforce, right? When something is going on from corporate, right? You get the email down in your Outlook. <laughs> and then, it, you know, if you guys have a, have, a, have a team chat or whatever, then it comes in there. But communication is so important uh, for dealing with crazy scenarios like that. I also um, would like to add that I think communication is super important in general from like a team building perspective, especially because modding is not a paid position. There is a lot of friction that can result from a lot of the work that you put in um, without compensation, which everybody agrees to that as a moderator. You all sign up for that. Mm -hmm. But for me, learning um, team building skills is especially important within a mod community because y'all need to be, I mean, you don't, you don't have to be like, bestest friends or whatever but like you do need to be close you need to be on the same page you need to be able to trust each other if something were to go wrong so you can have each other's back so that way it kind of just reduces any friction that might happen it's just Mm -hmm. you know um something that you learn in the workplace that's also like very applicable to modding and vice versa like my teams in animation are like really tight a lot of the times because you know we get to know each other and stuff and i learned that from modding yeah and it's one of those like uh, Taffy's channel, like we don't have mod meetings regularly, but um, with the full force, so like, I mean, he's always been a full time streamer, but now with the platform contract, we've decided, you know, we want monthly mod meetings. They're going to be during stream, so it's going to be interesting. Um, That's but, cute. Yeah, but we want to spend time to like just catch up, sync up with each other each month, and just see what's going on. Um, that's been one of the hard things. Like, Thankfully, now that we have our mod sewer and we can kind of joke around and talk there, um, we've been getting to kind of socialize a little bit more. But it really helps have that like sort of family feel and just even saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry, work's busy. I can't really be there. Or, hey, I got asked by another friend who's streaming who needs a mod during our time. I need to, just, you know, have my attention split between the two chats, letting them know that thing, like, um, which is something that is really hard to do in a career um, environment sometimes of saying, hey, I need help with this, or hey, you know, my attention is divided on these projects. Can you help me prioritize? Because, yes, having a good um, work ethic and being able to focus on things is a strong skill that employers are looking at. Mm-hmm. But being able to say, you know, to notice that, hey, some of these things are slipping. What can we do to fix that? And not just be like, oh, it's your task, your problem, which if your bosses say that, like, I don't want to say get a new boss, but. <laughs> yeah, you've got yeah. other problems to worry about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and you think about it like uh, any company, right? Like when you're a part of a team, like a cubicle job, right? You guys, you have team outings and things like that. Um, or you have team meetings or whatever, like you know, icebreakers and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That is so vital on a mod team um, besides just meetings. Like it's, it's really vital to have, like you guys said, like a sewer, right? To be able to just dump your thoughts, dump your feelings and all those kind of things into that kind of place uh, to foster some camaraderie and brotherhood and sisterhood. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You don't, again, you don't have to all get along. You're all, we all come from different places, different countries, different backgrounds and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, there would be things we disagree on and like political ideological differences and all that. But um being on one page and one accord uh, is so vital because when things, you know, crap hits the fan, um, you, you need to be all as one. Yeah, like I've learned so much about like hidden trolls and stuff from some of our like a German or European mods that like we just don't know in the United States, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's really interesting to see that other perspective and kind of just kind of like mesh like that, you know. Yeah. Now that I've been... um like deputy junior modding for Frank the Pegasus and I'm in their mod chat and discord, like finding out some of these things of like, Oh, one of the mods there uh, is of Polish heritage. She's kind of knows a little bit there. And so she's like, yeah, here's some terms to kind of, you know, keep a watch on in Polish because they kind of just went out and like, that's, you know, key knowledge that needs to be shared. Um, 
Yeah. Um, so beyond just um, the team building and whatnot, I think a big thing with that can be, um, or I guess not just beyond it, but just with it, um, is in those meetings, having the opportunity to do voice calls, doing video calls, because right now it's a big thing of, you know, a lot of work has moved remote. Um, and before that, uh, everyone just got to be near each other. And as mods, we don't have that privilege really. Like most likely yeah. your co-mod is not like in the cubicle next door. If, it, if they are yeah. high five, that's great. Um, but you need a chance to actually have like to make that person feel like a person, not just a name on the screen. Um, I mean, that's one of the things that helps make chat actually feel more personable and easier to manage and be part of a community when you have things like selfie um, areas in Discord. So you can actually get to know someone and get to um, see part of their life when you have um, those real life issue ones, getting to know what their struggles are. That way you, you can humanize these chat uh, people in chat that we, you know, if they're having a bad day, you might already know it. And then you can kind of, you know how to pull them back. You know yeah. how to help them. That's also something that's really interesting about modding versus like employment is um, when, when you're a modder, like when you're employee, depending on your responsibilities, you might have to check up on the welfare of people. But in, um, in chats, when you know that a regular is just having a really bad time, it's often up to us as mods to like actually make the effort to reach out to kind of see what's going on. Cause like, we don't, we don't have like a company counselor yeah. or whatever to, to recommend people to. And sometimes people just have really bad days. And so that's like a really interesting, addition to modding that that's really just helped build relationships in the workforce yeah um, why it's we have, those... um sorry, go oh, go ahead. you go ahead oh no i was just saying that's why we have like you do things with your community right you do co-op stuff you do um community events we're doing this thing in, in locals community music fest right now that have been really really fun um, and, and people get to submit song requests. That's a very personal thing, music, right? And so you start to learn things about your community and you realize that, yeah, these people are, because you lose sight of that, right? That these usernames are in chat are people typing on keyboards, right? Mm -hmm. And there are people and they have they have their own issues and struggles. So yeah, it's important to be able to um, humanize them in a way um, and, and, and realize yeah. that they're, yeah, they're going to have their ups and downs. And so you just have to kind of compensate for that. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you can do as far as taking your mod experiences and placing it into jobs, I've found that a lot of my mod experience really helps me. Um, I'm doing customer support now for Pretzel on top of my job here with um, so cool, <laughs> Streamer really? Square. Um, well, that's awesome. And so being able to deal with a whole widespread of individuals in chat has given me a lot of skills for dealing with a wide breadth of people who are upset and angry about things or just curious and don't know and need to learn. Like um, I found that customer support and any sort of um, client relations, uh, retail, waitressing, wait, our wait staff, all of those really are uh, jobs that can pull really heavily from uh, moderation and those mod skills, which kind of seem like some of the obvious ones. Like, yeah, if you can handle a mod chat, then hopefully you can handle um, working at a restaurant with any kind of grumpy customers. Yeah, but, right. Managing uh, different like menu items and like all the weird things that customers want to change, yeah. and having to run back to the kitchen and then run back out and then run back to the kitchen and then you know it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's rough. Conflict, conflict management conflict yeah. management right like between people between people in chat oh right gosh, learning how to right? deal yeah like so you 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 learn how to be kind of like a mediator right uh -huh. you learn how to be a mediator and how to like uh handle handle beefs like people, people start fighting in chat and you're like y'all you gotta take this like take it to dms at least yeah. like where do you, mm -hmm. i don't want you to hear this you gotta come in and be the peacemaker that's like yeah. a huge <laughs> part of it or just yeah. distract them mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. then, there's also the issues of like as a moderator, you also have to learn all these different bot commands. And then if you're working with different channels, knowing the bot languages. And so um, I know there have been a few mods who, because of their moderation skills, have actually been able to uh, improve their coding skills and develop that out. And then like that actually becomes wow. a super marketable thing. Like 
if you can if you can really dig deep in a bot and learn that back in the API and all the, the coding, especially if you can start building bots by scratch. Like I know a few people who have started doing that. I'm just like, dang, like where do you learn? Like I learned a little bit of HTML and I can do some small things, but all of that like really plays in. Um, which even the bot codes like. That's all linguistics, which to me, HTML is all linguistics. It's shapes and linguistics. If you can, if you can order something like uh, physically, like on a piece of paper, you can um, then make a website. You just have to know the language for it. Yeah, um, I was gonna yeah. say like it's it's nuts. Like being a mod now, there are so many things that I've had to dabble in that I like never mm -hmm. dabbled in or just didn't do very much of right now. So like any given day, I might not. It's not just the the chat mediation, right? I might be doing things in Photoshop, photo editing, or video editing, or running a platform like a YouTube channel, or um or yeah, building out sheets and and organizing things like all of these things that are applicable in so many different other possible you know possible avenues and other career possibilities um those are all modding is such a modding for a streamer is such a multifaceted thing uh there's so many different roles and hats you can wear and it, it, it there's so many skills that you can acquire along the way yeah it that's is you go <laughs> okay i was gonna say it's also cool because because modding typically is um i mean you know depending on the streamer you may or may not have to apply for a position but it really does give you the opportunity to grow and learn new skills without having to already previously have had those skills like they require in a workplace mm -hmm. so like i mean dylan's like loco's youtube wizard right now he's like amazing at it and um or just different things like i've learned a ton about um i mean i'm terrible at graphic design but i've still learned a ton about it for when it comes to like formatting things for thumbnails or like teaching other mods like basic like resolution principles and um mm -hmm. it's, it's it's really cool there's like the broad um overreach that modding has because it'll allow you to learn things in a in a relatively safe environment where you're not gonna get fired or like have your finances compensated because you it doesn't work out yeah it's definitely like a safe incubator for growing skills um, I will say though, like, then there was a conversation in chat about this too, like, depending on how much you are giving of your creative talent, uh, there should be some sort of compensation back to you as a moderator. Um, you got to arrange that with your streamer. But if like, you've gotten to the point of where you could actually start having legitimate co uh, clients as a graphic designer, then you need to start talking to your streamer about, you know, you keep having me make every single thumbnail for your going live things or for this or for doing YouTube. If you start getting really into that, like streamers should start compensating mods. Um, no, we can't get paid for just being there and chat. But if you're making your living as a streamer, I know it sounds greedy because I'm a mod saying this, but I really do believe it. Find a way to compensate your mods at least once a year, whether through a mod appreciation stream where they get all of the bits and donos from that day, um, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. It doesn't take much really, because really, if you just say thank you, that's a start. Yeah. But doing some small thing, um, making a charity incentive. Taffy did that this year as part of his St. Jude. Anyone who gave a $250 donation could pick a mod and that mod would get a meal. We busted through all that and every single mod got a meal. That's so sweet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so then you get to like play into the channel meme of like mods don't get fed. Like, well, you know, if you want mods to get fed, <laughs> oh my gosh, no. donate the charity and then, then the streamer will feed the mod. And that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, mods are so important. Mods are so important. I know this is a show about modding, so it's like an obvious thing to say. <laughs> but like, yeah, like mods are so important. Like, can you imagine being like a large streamer? and not having moderators like who's gonna like handle issues in chat who's gonna ban the trolls who's gonna run giveaways all those sort of things like i myself am realizing this very quickly how important <laughs> mods are because like my channel i've only been streaming for about five weeks now but it's grown very very fast and like having people like new people coming into your chat and being active it's crazy but then you quickly realize oh my god i need mods like i need actual people to handle these things because i'm trying to stream and it's hard to engage and all that with in dealing with trolls and stuff and it's, it's been like a like a learning lesson that yeah the importance of like having good moderators who are very dependable 
uh, because you, it's it's impossible to stream and stream successfully with people mm -hmm. in your chat if you don't have people to moderate your chat. Yeah, and I think like it doesn't always have to be like a financial compensation, but even just like hanging out with the mods or like saying, yo, y'all, y'all are great, right? It's just like tiny mm -hmm. things like that that really do make it worth it. Um, Because I'm not sure that there's a single mod that I know that at some point has not felt like quitting due to being underappreciated and you know it happens of course um yeah. you know it it happens um and you know hopefully not consistently if you still have all of your mods um because it's it's a it's such a wonderful opportunity to be able to to help out a, a production and a streamer that you really care about mm -hmm. um but it's still it can get a little bit taxing i'd say yeah and i will say like streamers we're, we won't want to admit this openly very often, but mods do talk to each other in places where you're not around, um, in private DMs and such. So if there are streamers out there who are not good at appreciating their mods, the mod team knows. The whole mod team knows, probably. Um, with, uh, and so, you know, if you want to have these people stay around, and mods are very vital, I mean... Um, Twitch even did a whole ad campaign with Miller Lite about it just because, you know, yeah. they wanted to find a way to to kick it back to a, a few mods um, and, you know, acknowledge in some way that mods really are indeed the backbone of this because we do so much more than ban trolls. Um, we're there to greet everyone. We help out with the back end as far as sometimes we'll do graphics, we'll do YouTube, we'll do... Twitter stuff. We'll run your giveaways. We'll help you get ideas for your merch. Um, there's a lot that we'll, we'll even just be there as a person you can vent to if you need to just let out some steam. Like your mod team is your family here. Um, so yeah, it's a big thing. I do like how in modding, like because um, uh, I think that it, it is a, a positive thing that mods aren't being financially compensated if purely for the reason that in work environments where they try to foster a family community, it is often an excuse to mistreat your employees or to be abusive. Whereas with modding, you form a family almost organically out of necessity and how to how to function correctly. And because you like want to be there. And I think that's kind of nice that you can be there um, without you know, having to say, oh, but um, I'm getting paid, so I guess I'll stick around. You know, it really does ensure that, like, you have a team that is best fit for your community who really wants to be there um, and who wants to make, uh, help you make your stream what it is. Whereas, like, with employers, you don't, you know, there's no way that I'm going to be hired to do retakes and then work unpaid overtime. I'm just not going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's my job. You're an employer. You have labor standards that you have to follow. But for modding, like, it's your free time. It's a hobby and it's fun. If I want to go above and beyond something, I don't have to worry about being mistreated on an economic or employed level. With that, I'm wondering, do you find it easier to set boundaries with your work family and your work life than it is to set boundaries as a mod? Good question. Charlie? I'm sorry, I was hoping you would answer first because I... I was <laughs> <doing that. laughs> uh, boundaries. Um, I feel like, well, with the, with the job, right? Like mm. you, 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 it's hard because it's such a hard line thing. You, you clock in a certain time, clock out a certain time, that's that, right? Um, with modding, I guess there's more flexibility, right? Um, especially being there, um, you know, they want you. Obviously, the streamer, you, you get brought into a team, and the expectations that you're, you'll be there and all that, right? Um, but you know, it's not like it's not the same mentality of like you got to be here or else you'll be fired. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That, yeah, that's tough. That's tough to say. Yeah, I know. For me, some like. I find I give a lot more of myself to my streamers. And then at work, it's easy to say, well, they're paying me for this. I'm here until this hour. After that, I can pack it up and go, which, I mean, part of my personality is sometimes I don't actually pack it up and go. I'm still working and thinking about work stuff when I leave. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's 
I don't know, for me, it's really hard to sometimes set those boundaries of the streamer because I want to help. I want to say yes. And learning to just be like, hey, you know, I, I can't do this today. I can't, or you need this graphic. I'm sorry, I can't do it today. Like someone else has to help you there, um, yeah. which sucks. I mean, boundaries are something that has been really interesting to me because I've been a mod for about two years and the entire two years that I've been here, I've noticed that um, modding really is, it's a, it's a very unique social position because I mean, like y'all said, you go to work, you clock in, you clock out, and then you go home. With modding, because you're volunteering, you're like kind of on this semi-elevated social level where you do get to um, communicate with your streamers more and you do get to help them like with their projects and run the productions. Um, but then there's yet another level of uncertainty with, okay, so like how informal is this going to be? How, um, how close is acceptable? Is it acceptable to be to get to your streamer? Um, you know, because I mean, on some channels, like uh, people will just mod you if you're like IRL friends and that's, that's yeah. like a very clear cut boundary example. Y'all are IRL friends first and then your mods. But if you're mods first and then you're like slowly getting to know the streamer and it's just kind of, it's, um, I would say it's, it's difficult to set boundaries because you care so much about the stream and because you care so much about the mod team that it's, it's really going to be a very personal answer depending on the way that you are feeling or the things that you're going through in your life at that moment. And becoming a mod, like joining a team, um, that like you enter like a different door, like right. So you enter a door, and then like, oh, you were a member, a prominent member of the community here. But then you enter the mod door, and it's like this is a whole other thing here. And you learn new sides of the streamer, and also new sides of these the mods. Uh, so it's really helpful too when you come into a mod team to just take your time to learn the culture of the mod team because you might think you know the culture of the stream because you've been there. But the mod team and everything that goes on behind the scenes has its own completely different culture. Um, and it helps that, you know, when you have a good team that are people who are welcoming uh, to be able to learn that. And again, learn the boundaries of like, like what's formal and informal with this relationship with the streamer. Right. But you just need to like take your time, look around. You know what I mean? Um, but it's a very different thing um, when you become a mod because the stream, the stream takes on a different context now. Right. Uh, it's not the same thing. You're not just a viewer anymore. You are a role model. You're a part yeah. of the stream. Yeah, and that can get hard, too, with some of these interpersonal relationships. At work, you can have your close friends and work friends, and maybe you see them after hours and whatnot. Um, who knows? Maybe you have one of those inner office room uh, romances. You can be, um, uh, you know, Dwight and Angela and have that going on. Um but honestly, when you're with the mod team and the stream team too, it's a little difficult because with some of these boundaries, because you really do form an emotional attachment with your mod team, at least I have. And I think it's a great thing, but it's also something you have to be aware of because then when those boundaries get crossed in certain ways, it does feel very personal. It's hard not to get emotional about it. And when that happens with the streamer, that's even worse. Um, because you have to learn, like, know how to step back and to pull yourself away from that and be like, you know, this is also someone I consider a friend. The streamer might consider you a friend, but not at the same level that you consider them a friend and a family. And so you have to really evaluate those relationships and be okay with where they're at. Um, I like to assume that Taffy and I are friends. Like, joke around that maybe he's like my my Twitch big brother, but if he was uncomfortable with that, I would have to, you know, rein it in and just be accepting of that. Like he's kind of my boss, but you know, a friendly, good boss, but you can't always be best friends with everyone on your teams, whether you're at work or in real life classes, same applies to your mod team. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just look at Loco as a really mean supervisor. Yeah. She's the worst. <laughs> She actually signed my paycheck, so I'm saying nothing. Okay. <laughs> no, look, it's been great. That's fine. No, uh, Rainy, you bring up like a really good point about that because the boundaries are also going to depend on the streamer. Like one of the reasons I'm uh, an elderly squirrel mod is because we just like ended up randomly being friends. And so I'll pop into his stream and help him mod and stuff. But I also talk to him a lot like off of stream. But you're not going to have exactly that relationship with every person that you mod for. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And sometimes it is going to feel more like a business relationship and it's going to be like, I punch in, I help out with chat. Then I go off in the afternoon and do my own things that I'm not really hanging out in the discord and mod chat and all this stuff. And that's perfectly fine too. Um, yeah, it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do like what um, my, my lovely co-host who's not here, what he said in chat, um, you're part of the stream and that's important to remember. Like, Mods are a part of the stream. They are part of the community. We are part of this thing. And so, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that we have to remember with any of our actions. If we're having a bad day, like at work, you can kind of get away with just like keeping to yourself and not having to announce your bad days to everyone. Right. As a mod, sometimes you can do that. But like, if you're going to be out there in public as a mod, like maybe give them a heads up of, I have low spoons. Yeah. That's what I yeah. say. I'm like, I have a low spo spoon day, which if you don't know spoon theory, um, it was originally created for individuals with what are called um, in invisible conditions, invisible illnesses. So these are ones where you look physically healthy, you look perfectly fine, but you're dealing with chronic pain, chronic fatigue, all these other issues. And so people can't see it. And so the idea is you have so many spoons per day, which I've, I've got a spoon with me. <laughs> and so each each aspect takes a different spoon getting up getting dressed that's a spoon having a meal that's a spoon interacting with someone in public spoon and so sometimes you don't have spoons to deal with chat and so when you're on your last spoon it's a good thing to tell your mod squad of like hey you know i'm, I'm kind of having a day i'm just gonna sit back and lurk and you know get trolls and stuff but i need someone else to really fill in and do that whole, whole be a part of the community and be happy and everything um, and really get conversations going. I do really like that about modding is that like a team is very fluid and can fill needs as you need to take a break. Whereas like at work, if you're having a bad day, sucks. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> like, I mean, my producer right now is amazing, right? So if I'm having a really bad day, I can tell him, but I'm still going to have to get my work done at the end of the day. And maybe, maybe my, my quota is going to come up a little bit short by the time that we have our next meeting. And he's going to understand that, but I can't just like sit back all day and do nothing or at least do the bare minimum because that's just not going to fly. So it's, it's so cool that like, I mean, you know, on a team, you just like, as mods, you just raise each other up. And if someone is feeling bad, then you just let them go, go over in the dungeon, kind of hang out, sleep a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally okay to take the day off. Like that was something that even though I've been a mod on Twitch for like six, seven years now, I felt this pressure to be in every single stream I was a mod for, whether that meant like Oh my god! Being there and having multiple chats open and all that, or being there when I'm sick, when I'm tired, staying up late and not sleeping. When I got to Taffy's, Animal Crossing was coming. I'm like, hey, you know, I want to go watch my friends stream on this day that we're normally streaming because it's Animal Crossing release day, and I'm really hyped. He's like, go! Like, you're not required to be here. Like, I want you to enjoy the stream and like want to be here, but you're not paid. This is like go <laughs> that's especially true when you first join a team yeah right? because your whole mindset is i gotta make a good impression i gotta make a good impression i gotta make a good impression so I'm gonna be here every day i'm gonna be here every day I'm gonna be like, oh, what, what do i gotta do what i gotta do so like yeah like you yeah you have to again that's one of those things where you gotta learn the culture learn what your streamer mm -hmm. expects from you learn what the team expects from you uh but that's a that's a really hard thing to kind of uh process when you first join a team yeah. yeah, something I love about modding, um, you know, again, something that you can't do while you're employed is you can't say, well, I'm not going to be here today. Yeah, like that's exactly. gonna come with like, consequences, right? I'm not but, feeling it today. Like, <laughs> well, like on a mod team, you know, we we do a daily mod check in before every logo stream to say, hey, you know, react with green if you're gonna be here the whole time, react with yellow if you're gonna be in and out, react with red if you're not gonna be here, and that's great because as someone who works while she also mods, like I can usually just react with yellow or red if I'm gonna be really busy, you know, and then I don't. I don't ever really watch Twitch on weekends except for this Saturday, but um, you know, so it's, it's really nice to have that flexibility. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about mod view too, with the new tool, like you can see how many active mods are in chat. Granted that includes bots and the streamer and whatnot, but like mm -hmm. having that ability to just click a little button and be like, Oh, here's who's in chat. And you can see a lot quicker and a lot easier than just going into um, the viewer list. It's going to load so much faster. <laughs> Um, and that really helps because you can kind of keep an idea of like, oh, okay, which I do want to bring up uh, the three of us are definitely 
more chatty, more interactive mods. We have a lot of friends who are just the, you know, stay back and lurk mods. Um, one of the local mods, I'm assuming he's still on the team, OSG, super great guy. He's definitely more in the background kind of helping out doing things. Um, mm -hmm. Ed's in chat, but Ed's main role is to do the bot. And that's great. Like having those like defined roles, if you know you can do that, you don't have to be a super chatty, friendly, happy person to be a mod, um, which I think is a big thing. Like, yes, it's good to have more of the chatty mods than it is to have the, uh, I'm going to sit here and watch for troll banhammer mods. Um, but you do need both because sometimes the chatty mods are so chatty the trolls get in there real quick. And if you don't have someone with a, a, a nice little trigger finger on their mouse, it's going to get in there a little too quick. Yep. It's like, uh, it's like the Avengers or like any kind of team, right? You need your need the different people to fill the different roles, right? You got the ban hammer, you got the engager. He's actually superhero names, right? The ban hammer, <laughs> the engager. Dylan, um, oh my gosh, you nerd. <laughs> oh, shut up. Um, like you have those people and then you have, you know, the Photoshop person who does like the going lives and all that and mm -hmm. and the video editor person um like yeah every everybody has like sort of their, their fills their roles um and you, you settle into yeah. those roles and it allows you to function so much better because everybody knows what everybody does yeah i i do say i, I kind of want carly to illustrate out all these little superhero mods now <laughs> I, I mean i can i mean you've seen the 2019 mod calendar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um one of the things i do want to talk about too is modding while you're working when the two worlds cross over um how do you kind of make time in your jobs to to mod um how do you have you ever had to explain to an employer uh what you're doing on twitch or do you hide it like because i like people are constantly on twitch at work um and i and i know it's a, a thing because like yeah you're getting paid to do this so modding technically is not something you should be doing but sometimes there's opportunities to let them cross over yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like uh yeah so for me again I'm, I'm on leave right now but i can tell you like what my experience has been like when i'm when i'm working like so my job i start my job at 8 a.m or logged in or whatever and then you know so i go mod for loco at 11 a.m eastern right so what i would do right here's my trick I would just get a lot of work done in the first three hours <laughs> before the stream starts. I do that too. Because I, I know, I know from that period on, like I'm going to be focused and engaged on what's happening with the stream. And I've got like alt tabs and everything like that to like, you know, because looking at two chats, like stream chat and work chat, and then what I'm supposed to be doing for work purposes. But yeah, it's tough. It's a tough thing to balance. Um, You just have to like adjust. I was actually really surprised when I first, started modding and I was working at the same time like literally I'm working my nine to five while I'm doing mod stuff and uh, it's just one of the things where I had to like okay I'm gonna do some mod stuff here and look at chat here for these next 15 minutes and then I'm gonna mosey over here and get some work done and come back yeah. and yeah but at the same time while doing it simultaneously mm -hmm. like a crazy person I, I just think my experience is really different because I, I'm an animator and so like they literally don't care what I do at work like I like I'm, I'm dead serious like I could go and take a nap and they just, I mean, like, maybe it would be frowned upon, but if I used my lunch break for taking a nap, like, it's chill, right? If I'm watching Netflix while I work, it's fine. If I'm watching a movie, if I get up and go over to my coworker to see what show they're working on and watch their animatic for 30 minutes, they don't care <laughs> as long as I get my work done. And so for me, modding is just like, I mean, I started off watching Twitch to have something to, to work to because um, I would just get so bored with, like, music or YouTube or shows or whatever. And then... Um, now I can just go, I can just mod. Um, if I have a meeting, I mean, the mods know when I have my meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I can do that. Or if there's like a really important event happening, like if we're getting a really big raid and, um, or if there's like, uh, someone who put troll bots in the chat, I can take a break and that's totally fine. And my employer really doesn't they don't care as long as I get my work in it's fine <laughs> and i mean now working from home like i work from uh I, I still do my eight hours but i do it like way earlier in the day so i'm off by like two so i can do streamer square stuff and that's fine because again i get my work done so it's very yeah. different for me yeah my jobs now i mean uh i don't get paid to mod streamer square stuff um 
never have, never will, because we just, or at least not until we pay all of our other mods first. Um, you know, so when I'm here, I'm on my time. Um, but with Pretzel, it's one of those, like, I'm doing that job in the background of everything that I'm doing. Um, and I'm actually salaried there, so I'm not logging hours. So that kind of helps. Um, when I was working at my graduate school in our history department, it was nice because I had an, a desk with two monitors. And so what I would do is I would have stream and chat up somewhere where I could kind of watch, but it was tilted away so no one could see me in my co little corner. And then I would pop out a second instant of chat. Uh, and so when I was working hard on things, I would have my headphones on, one ear off so I could hear the office things, know what's going on. And then I would have chat up so I could keep watch of chat, listen to the streamer if I need to hear them call for me, and then actually just be doing other work. Um, so the That's monkey... Cool. The multi setup really helped. Um, otherwise, yeah, if you can just have it going, have it playing in the background, having an instance of chat off to the side if you're modding, that really, really helps. Um, but yeah, if you're doing a job like factory work or retail, like you really can't be there for um, your streamers. And so that's when making your schedule kind of known to your mod team really helps. Um, I know. Uh, I think with Lucid's, I had a little, when I was modding for him and I had a, a job that actually had set hours, I just gave a nice little Photoshop of here's my schedule for the semester when I have classes and whatnot. So here's a picture of that. I'm not going to be here during these times. So I'm sorry, but these days, these times, it's just, I'm unavailable. And that really helps with mod coverage. Like we do that here with Streamer Square too. We want to make sure that no mod, it feels like, they are covering an entire show on their own. And so that's one of the things like knowing each other's schedules, knowing each other's availability, making people aware when that stuff changes and has big changes for a long time. Like you have to talk to each other. It's communication again, like communication is key. And I feel like being on a mod team really helps you be more comfortable with that. Um, I know that even just being in chats with other people, like, I'm way more comfortable than talking in office settings just for a small chit chat stuff, um, doing things just to get to know people or, you know, being able to kind of read the vibe of a room. You get to learn that with a mod and then learning that as an office situation. So you kind of know like, Oh, this is how we're going to do things today. Yeah. And I think if you're a larger streamer, that's something to keep in mind with your mod team. If you're, if you're a larger streamer, you're building a mod team or whatever, build as much of it, you know, as large of a team as you, as you can, because availability is something that you're always going to be concerned about. You don't want to, like you just said, you don't want to tax any two or three mods to make them feel like they have to be obligated to be there every day because you don't have enough. So staff properly. We, we, hear, we hear that all the time, right? In businesses yeah. and companies, right? Staff properly, staff accordingly. It's really important mm -hmm. also in modding. Yeah. I always used to laugh at, uh, with Wes about things about how large the mod team is for Logo. But she streams, what, seven, eight hours a day? And mm -hmm. you got to have that coverage. you got to have people to be there for the morning, for the afternoon, for the end of it. Um, and it doesn't need to be that same person the entire time. Like, you can take shifts if you need to do things. Like, that's kind of one of the nice things. Like, if you need to go out and just not be at a desk for three hours at a time, like, you should do that as a mod. Like, you know, if there's absolutely no one there, then, you know, maybe suck it up but if there's no one there and you're the only one there continually ask for another mod be like hey you know i've noticed this person in chat's really great can we can we maybe add them to the team we need them for sure yeah or if you're like overextending yourself on the team like it's totally okay to ask like other members of the team to help you out like for the longest time um chef used to do the going live and the candy distribution and um, most of the giveaways. And now he he's like learned to like help delegate that. We've learned to help him and to pitch in. And it's, I mean, we're supposed to work together as a team and chef it likes to really overwork himself. So uh, <laughs> we have to that's yell at him for does. that. <laughs> I know, it, right? It, it is yeah. so important. Transparency. So it goes mm -hmm. back to the communication. I keep going back yes. to that because it's so important. Man, like as a team, you gotta talk. It's, it's why I also say like, <laughs> We, it's so good that we, you know, on, on our team, like we we talk a lot, not just in meetings. We like will so much. we'll do impromptu <laughs> voice Like my very first day that I got modded in Discord, like they brought me into a voice chat to haze me. 
and, yeah. and, and, and the other mod. And it, so like, and that was like my first introduction to the whole team. But mm -hmm. it's just good to have that informal like hangout session, and it got to it made you guys people, right? It made it humanized mm -hmm. you guys, and it humanized me. That's so important. The transparency as a team, like to be able to say, like, yeah, hey, I, I'm doing this, that, and the other. Can someone else help me out with this? Say that because if if you don't say anything, no one will know that you're struggling with something. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a big thing too. Is when you're coming as a brand new mod and an established team, that can be intimidating and scary. And so like, yeah, there's really gonna there's gonna be uh, some hazing. There's probably I, I be used I used the I always say like it for me it was like joining a show that's been in seven seasons now, right? Yeah, that's like, exactly. I'm like, like, cause you guys, you, you know, the stream is really successful. You guys, like, I guess you needed us. <laughs> like, you needed bodies. So like, here we're coming in to just join the cast, and it was intimidating because everyone has their own culture, and then you have to learn that there's a brand new like culture behind the scenes. And so yeah, it was very intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like you're like the new interns on Grey Anatomy. Like they need to have you on there, but who's gonna know if you're gonna stay for like five seasons or if you're there for two? Right, exactly. and like it's totally fine if you join the team and you realize, oh, this goes way beyond the responsibilities I thought. I can no longer handle this, and it's okay to step down. But again, <laughs> like communication, right? Like it's totally chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, drunk mod meetings are, like, legitimately really good team building because if you have a solid mod team, then if there's ever an altercation, then it's, like, chill, right? You can solve it, you can get back to work, and, um, you know, you can just work on the stream again. Yeah, yeah if you don't talk, like, if you don't talk as a team, like, just in, again, in formal and informal settings, like, when things happen and crisis hits, like, you, you won't get, you won't get along right because you won't you don't know each other well enough but like now we have memes and jokes amongst each other like and and when i came in they there were memes and jokes and amongst, amongst them so like it just yeah it's like a weird freaky family like you know yeah, I mean? it, it just, really it is just really works. <laughs> so dysfunctional yeah which then helps you like again with crisis management and any other job you're going to be able to get in be able to try to find your place in that work environment be able to understand whatever little in jokes that are there or how they do things. Um, but it really does help. Like if you can make it as a mod, if you can get in there and be a part of that family, then I have no doubts that you can go into any office, any career and apply that there and then just establish yourself as a part of the team there. Cause you're going to want to be a team player. That's already part of your skill. If you were a mod, you already want to be a team player. Even if you're like the lurkiest of lurker mods, you're there to help support people. And yeah. in my experience, um, employers love that. They want people who are proud of the community or proud of the brand. You want to shout it to the rooftops. Like they want that. And streamers want that for their mods too. Like we're their biggest cheerleaders. I mean, sometimes there's people in chat who are bigger cheerleaders, but you know, we're also cheerleaders up there no, as well. No, we're better. We're better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We are sort of running towards the end, but I do want to get to this part too of talking about how to apply your mod experience into a resume. Um, it's a complicated oh, thing. Um, I'll go ahead and share some of my thoughts on it um, because I do list things in, I think my my LinkedIn, I think, potentially, or I do bring it up in my interviews and whatnot. Like I mentioned that as a community moderator, I'm there to fulfill roles as far as um, making sure chat is there and running and people feel welcome and special, which is a great thing to do if you're applying for any kind of customer front position. Um, the fact that you can solve problems quickly, uh, and do it in a tactful manner is a big thing. Um, a lot of employers love that you can kind of think on your feet and have quick solutions for things. And then that teamwork and communication, that's a big thing to put on there. Um, I will say though, that, like when people don't understand what Twitch is or what a moderator is, like you will have to explain that further. A big thing that I do caution against is using different titles for your mod position. Um, for me, if I'm an employer and I'm looking at someone that if it says project manager, if it says community manager, um, I'm going to assume that means a very specific thing with very specific roles and tasks that you've done. So you need to very, like, you know, make that clear. If you want to put chat moderator as a title and then inside your um, 
description then put in like community manager because then it's not an official title. They're not actually looking for these things. Um, and you never know, like this is listed as your experience. They might want to contact that streamer, which, you know, let the streamer know you're putting this on a resume if you're listing that yes. person's channel. Um, because one, you're not going to get their their phone number most likely to put on there, and don't list the streamer's phone number ever or their legal Never name. Never their real name. Just yeah. don't dox your streamer, y'all. Yeah, don't do that for any job application because you never know who's seen any of these things. Um, like unless yeah. they explicitly tell you that you can yeah. do it and give you the information, like just don't, don't yeah. do it. I mean, if they do want to interview you and they do want to check your reference with your streamer, let them know ahead of time. The streamer can then decide, like, yes, this is my legal information if you really need it. But they most likely your streamer has a business email. So put that on there if you they need it. Or I always put like references available on request because that takes Yeah, up I do that too. Um but yeah, and if you are looking at jobs within the entertainment industry, within streaming industries, be very careful how you list your mod experience because yes. they know what this stuff means. So you can just say straight up chat moderator this many years. And that means something to them. Or you can say this many channels, this many partner channels. Like they know what that means. Yeah. I would say coming from the entertainment industry, don't ever list modding as like um, production coordinator. Don't list it, list it as showrunner. Don't do any of that because like those are actual jobs yeah. and they are like very, very different from moderating. And like people are going mm -hmm. to know when you're making things up. Or stretching. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's fine to put things like that in the description of your duties because it's very they, they yeah. cross over. But as your actual title, that, that title has to mean something. Um, if you want to put head moderator, maybe let your streamer know ahead of time. In most chats, like people kind of know within the mod team who who has been there the longest and who actually feels like a head mod. The um, alpha mod. Yeah. Yeah. Mod. yeah. And so like they kind of know. Um, if you're just a moderator, that is still something to be proud of and something that you can put on there because it does apply across fields. You um, could also put something relating to charity on your resume because of so many streamers that do charity. You do have to like run bots. You have to help run charities. You have to help run yeah. giveaways. And those are skills that are very valuable within certain industries. But again, like be careful, like don't say um, charity organizer, right? Yeah. Because like that is a very completely different job. Mm -hmm. One that really takes a lot of knowledge as far as knowing how to work with nonprofits and all these things. Yeah. And that's getting grants and funding, like, no. <laughs> but you can put um, virtual event coordinate, uh, coordination. Like, oh, oh, that's really good. That is snazzy. When you put things in there, you can take off those like little personages like um, manager, you can put managing, management, like yeah. turn it from a noun into um, an adjective, an adverb, and all that. Like the other parts of grammar that I should know, but don't. Dude, that's like 3,000 IQ right there. <laughs> yeah, it's It's been really um, interesting, like, especially lately uh, with my birthday this past weekend, like, I've come to realize that like I have seven years of experience on Twitch alone. And then before that, starting in from 2008, I have community management through blogging and forums there. And so you'll be surprised how quickly you pick up these skills and you rack experience. And so if you're out there looking for jobs and you've been on Twitch for five years as a mod, even if you are like 17, 18 or whatever, that's experience. That's like yeah. legitimate stuff. Don't discredit it. Or even like that would, I mean, like specifically Twitch related jobs are going to know exactly what it means to mod for like mm -hmm. a large partnered streamer, right? Like if you're, if you're applying to like a Twitch management group or if you're applying for yeah. a Twitch staff itself, like that's going to be more applicable. Those are, those are still skills that you have that are very valid and you can also just say, yeah, moderator for this person. And they're, they're going to know what yeah. that yeah. means. It means. It means you have experience with the platform on a, on a high level. Yeah, actually, like platform proficiency. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of jobs out there that are related to and adjacent to streaming that aren't just, you know, Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, Facebook. Um, the fact that I'm working for Pretzel now is a big one. Like, 
this is a music platform that was made for streamers. You could do the same thing with any other music platform. Um, anyone who needs uh, any any brand could use someone to manage their social media, to manage their YouTube presence. Like they need that. Um, there's also like people who um, manage uh, affiliates and whatnot, which not Twitch affiliates, but as far as like brand ambassadors and whatnot, like having brand and partnership amb um, mm -hmm. ambassadors that you can actually bring on these uh, influential people on Twitch, on social media, and actually know how to manage those relationships because you've been in the Twitch industry. You know how streamers work, how they need to work with brands. You can apply that so many places. I mean, I know also like streamers just kind of like teach you things about business that you wouldn't otherwise learn. Like I have learned so much about professionalism and about how to be an advocate for myself when it comes to like sponsorships, just because of like all the stuff that Loco does and like getting involved with like a representative agency like OPG Group. It's just um, mm -hmm. modding is a very valuable skill and learning how to advocate for yourself, learning how to sell yourself as well is, is very great for the work environment. Environment. Yeah, and it's like Locos mentioned a few times um, on the stream scene and whatnot. Like, don't go out there being like, oh, I only mod for small channels. Don't go out there being your, I'm just a small streamer. Pump yourself up. You yeah. Work. Like, even if you only have a consistent five stream or five viewers, that's still a lot of work. Like, you had to go through and get your overlays on. You have to go and manage all this stuff. Like, there's a lot of yeah. things that go into streaming and modding that, like, doesn't matter the size like you're doing it is the work. same damn thing in the animation industry i do not want to work with somebody who says they are an aspiring artist aspiring animator student mm -hmm. animator if you are an animator if you work in the programs you are an animator i don't care if you're a student and also mm -hmm. neither do jobs in the entertainment yeah. industry they don't care if you have a if you have a degree or not you have to put yourself out there you have to be able to sell yourself and then when you get into the job you need to be able to walk the walk after you talk that talk you know yeah. it's it's like it, it is it's just the same thing entertainment is such as broad spectrum it applies twitch applies to so many entertainment industry jobs that it's like it's actually crazy yeah. Yeah. And, and especially because everything is digital now. Right. So it's so easy. The barrier for entry to a lot of these things is so it's so easy to thin now. Right. Because like I used to say, oh, I want to be an aspiring writer or whatever. Right. I've written comic books now. Like, you know, as I can, you know what I mean? Or, and, hey, I wanna, and I want to mm -hmm. stream. I stream now. It's, you know, what I mean, yeah. it's not yeah. it's it's hard, but it's not that hard to get started. You just have to like really, man, I can't say this enough. Commit to it. Like yes, know what Dylan. you want to do and just go all in. Like do it. Do, do the thing it. you want to do. Just do it. Yeah. Literally aspiring, just do it. aspiring all that means is I want to do it, but I'm holding myself back. I'm too yes. afraid to commit. Stop being an aspiring whatever. Take a step and try. Because you're an animator, whether or not you're a good animator or a bad animator, you're still an animator. Thank you, Rini. And that good, bad, that's subjective. That can change. And mm -hmm. maybe you, like, I don't think I'm that great of an artist, but I have friends who think I am. Or same thing yeah. with writing. Like, I might not think I'm that good at something, but other people might actually think that your exact style, your exact method is what they need. So just keep searching. Recruiters and employers look for confidence. And if you're not confident mm -hmm. in yourself, they're not gonna hire you. Yeah, I'm not, mm -hmm. when I first started modding for Loco, it was my first ever mod job. And I, I didn't go around on Twitter being like, I wanna be an aspiring moderator or I'm an aspiring moderator for Loco right now. No, I'm a moderator. I have to learn how these things work now, you know? It, there's the, it, just get rid of it. Just be confident in yourself. Stop putting aspiring or like wannabe or, I, oh yeah, I, I tried it code no i used code. to say i used to say that i used to say to myself like oh i one day i want to write no just write a comic book you can do it like Dylan, that's so cool you just wrote a comic it. book and it looks so good do it just do it just do the thing that you want to do yeah. do it i can't be a little illustrator I have my own stickers now that. i love them i don't really i had no idea you drew them and then you told me i was like what the hell Reenie's an artist <laughs> Yeah, and it's one of those things like I discredit myself on that because I'm like, oh, I'm small time. It's not a profession. You don't have to monetize your hobbies, your passions, your interests. Yes. And so just go do it. Like 
we've definitely strayed from the original topic of like mod skills and whatever, but like I think this inspirational chat needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also relatable to employment. Like if you're not confident yeah. in yourself, they're not gonna hire you. And modding teaches you how to do that because yeah. as a streamer, you watch your streamer have to constantly reach out to things for yeah. opportunities, have to constantly email like a billion people, have to deal with idiots who don't look at their stream and want them to, to be like a brand ambassador for like a protein shake that they have to buy like a hundred dollars worth of and then like, talk about it on Twitch maybe once, right? Like, yeah. It's all very applicable stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, if you're not going to go out there and try in a job, you can at least try as a mod. You can try in chat. You can, um, get things going there. It's a safe, it should be a safe space for you to at least go ahead and do these things. I also lost my train of thought halfway through because I saw my meat snacks. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, oh, that's what my train of thought was looking at those. Snacks. Um, you don't have to, like, once you start seeing how the streamer is doing things, and once you know how the community is going, if you find brands that you think are good for your streamer, you can then learn the skills of that whole contract management, whatever, um, brand relations. You can reach out to brands for your streamer. Let them know ahead of time. Don't just randomly reach out and be like, oh, hey, XYZ brand really wants to, to work with you. And then streamer comes back like, I don't I don't know who that brand is. I don't trust I this you brand. Do that. Um, yeah, I actually awesome. um, went ahead and found a brand that fit a streaming friend really well. And I'm like, hey, have you heard of this? And they're like, yeah, that's really cool. I'm like, this feels like it'd be great for your community. Like, They've got a contact email. Do you care if I let them know who you are? Then they, they should check you out. I'm like, no, that's fine. And then they replied back to me because I was the one who sent the email saying, oh, wait, that's great. We would love to talk to them about this. I'm like, okay, streamer, give me your business email and I will that's set up awesome. a meeting. So you can do that. Like, if you think there's a brand that should check out your streamer, you can definitely say, hey, go check them out, but make sure you're not representing yourself as their manager or anything because – and don't expect to get much more than a thanks, maybe some free product that they do get free product too, but like they're not bound to do any of that. You're, you're doing that just for your own goodwill to let the streamer know, like in the brands know that these communities should work together. But if that's mm -hmm. something you like doing, there are definitely careers out there for you. Like every major brand that I know of, um, has influencer manager type positions. Uh, they're not necessarily in house. You might have to look at something bigger. Like Nintendo's is all held through Golan Harris, which is a big marketing ad agency. So look at big ad agencies and see like, okay, who do they manage and who can I contact to maybe get in and be that like partner manager for a brand. I'm going to get Loco a Squatty Potty um, sponsorship. Just like <laughs> they're going to mail her like hundreds of units of Squatty Potties. It'll be great. It's such a good idea. That can go really well with, you know, her, her poo shuffle brand. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about farting and poop today in stream too. It's just like a perfect fit. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, we are sort of hitting towards the end. So um, if you guys want to give any sort of final thoughts on any of this, any last encouragement, tips, um, where, and then we'll get into like where they can find you and all that stuff. So Dylan, go. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> modding is fun. Um, I, like I said, I, I, as I said before, you know, if you want to be a mod, become a member of a community, you know, help out when you have opportunities to help out, be a part of things. But I would say like, like when you join a team and you're a mod, like learn the team, learn the culture. Um, in, in, in as far as how it applies to, to your job, like, or to, to potential careers or whatnot. Um, it's such a multifaceted thing, modding. Um, there's so many aspects to it. There's so many aspects of streaming. Streaming is becoming more than just people playing video games on the internet, right? It's a whole industry now. It's blowing up. So this is a really good time to get into it, to get into modding, get into streaming and all that. But um, yeah, you, 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 there's so many things you can apply in modding, whether it's team management, crisis management, dealing with people, and you can apply that right to any job in any walk of life. Um, yeah um okay let me let me think let me gather my thoughts um i would say join a mod team because you're passionate about the community not for the status symbol and um depending on the team depending on the community it is a great place to safely explore other facets and other trades or skills that you want to learn without a consequence of financial failure 
I guess that's what I would say. Mod because it's fun. Be confident in yourself, right? Like, learn how to stick up for yourself. It teaches you responsibility, right? Like, you got this. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to say, like, you know, there's mod teams are diverse. They should be diverse. Um, you need to have a lot of different tools in that toolbox as far as mods go. Um, and so if you're a super chatty person and you think you'd be a great mod, go for it that way. If you uh, are lurky and you can handle bot stuff, go for it. If you can handle overlays or occasional design requests. Um, if you like doing project management stuff, customer support, you know, there's probably a place for you somewhere on a mod team somewhere. It might not be with your first picked streamer, um, but that's okay. We don't always get picked for the teams that we want, but there will always be a team for you. And that team can become your family if you just let it and just, you know, be yourself with them and let them actually see who you are because then they will show you who they are. Um, that's wholesome. Yeah. Um, so I do want to thank both Carly and Dylan for coming out. Um, we love having friends of the stream here on, on the channel. Um, we're, there's no dance stream of thought tonight, so we are the last stream for the night. Um, tune in tomorrow for Lucid Fox with Hotfix. He's going to have some great conversations on some sort of juicy topic for us. Um, Y'all better be there. I'm going to beat yes. you up. It's going to be hot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, uh, tell everyone where they can find you. Hi, you can find me at Carly Cartoons, like literally everywhere. I'm most active on Twitter. I post a lot of art stuff. I am an animator in the like adult cartoon industry. And so all of my streams, most of my posts are like, <laughs> <laughs> just be careful about that. They're out there. there. At Carly Cartoons everywhere. I draw butts and stuff. It's great. Come say hi to me. If you ever have any questions about modding or animation or industry things, just like literally shoot me an email or a DM. Yeah, and pigeons. Like anything about pigeons. I have a pet pigeon. Yes. Dylan, tell everyone where they can find I'm you. I'm distracted by this cat right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, um, it's such a cute kitty. I know. Um, I was told by Dylan. I, again, I'm a mod for Loco and for Streamer Square. I also am a full time ish, weird ish kind of streamer. Uh, Monday, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m., 10.30 a.m. Eastern. I'm playing a lot of Star Wars Battlefront 2. I just got my streaming PC here. Uh, I'm setting that up tonight. I'm super excited about it. So, yeah, uh, if you are looking for a cool new place to hang out, if, if you're in America on weekday mornings, I am your guy. So come watch. Yeah. And then again, I am Adorkably Rini. Uh, you can find me in McLaffy Taffy's channels in the morning. I rarely stream on my own stream, but it does happen at least once a month or so. Uh, but you can find me here on Streamer Square during every single live show in the chat and then every Tuesday at 4.45 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Behind the Stream Scenes with myself and my lovely, amazing, not quite here today, but in the chat co-host, Wes Sisa. Uh, and uh, occasionally cat, cat co-host. Go <laughs> no butts on stream, please. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all for tuning in. Uh, check us out next week. We're going to try to do some really cool things. Um, Wes and I will still be here, but we're going to hand our platformer over to some other some people who have some great things to say and have important voices. Uh, remember, if you're aspiring, you're just too scared and haven't tried yet. So just drop it. Try it. Stop being aspiring. Do it. So have a great Bye. night. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye 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 Bye. Make, bye, make everyone bye. talk about emo, about Ewoks. Bye. Oh, bye, Ewok, bye. Yeah. Oh, Ewok, bye. Ewok. Bye. Ah. bye, Ewok. Bye, Ewok. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye, Chet. Goodbye. Bye.